In the previous video, we saw how sampling works and discussed some of the potential concerns. In this video, we will look closely at sampling sinusoids, that is, sines and cosines. Here, we can see a sampled sinusoid. So, the sinusoid itself is a 1 hertz cosine, shown here in blue, and we're sampling it at 5 hertz, that is, 5 times per second. And we can see those samples shown here in red. Now, I'll show an animation where the green sinusoid is another sinusoid, it's a 4 hertz cosine, which goes to the same exact samples as the blue cosine, the lower frequency cosine. And furthermore, we can draw another one here, which again is at a higher frequency itself, the black one here, but again goes to the same exact samples. And here it is for the entire five seconds. So you can see that these are three different signals with different frequencies, but they all go to the same exact samples when the sampling rate is fixed. Therefore, the red samples could have come from any of these sinusoids, not necessarily just from the blue one, but from the green one or the black one or infinitely many others as well. As a further illustration, here is a zoomed in version of the same sinusoid as before, the blue one with the same samples as before. And now I'll show an animation where we have many different sinusoids at different frequencies all progressing through time and you can see that they all join up at the same exact sample locations. Again, as before, the samples in red could have come from any one of these individual various frequency cosines. Therefore, we have ambiguity as to which one they actually came from. But as mentioned in the previous video, we assume that they come from the smoothest or lowest frequency possible signal that can go through them, in this case, the blue one, because we don't really know any better and shouldn't make any other kinds of assumptions. Now let's examine this phenomenon mathematically. We defined before that x of n is equal to x of n times t sub s, where this is our sampled signal, the, the series of samples, and this is the continuous time signal into which we plug in n, which is an integer, times the sampling period t sub s. So therefore we take a snapshot every t sub s seconds. Suppose that in this example we have a signal x1 of t, which is equal to cosine of 2 pi 400 t. In other words, this is a 400 hertz cosine in the format of cosine 2 pi f t, where f is the frequency of the sinusoid in hertz. And let's say that x2 of t is equal to cosine of 2 pi 1400 t. So this is a 1400 hertz cosine. Now, I'm going to say that we will sample this. F sub s is going to be 1000 hertz. So to obtain our sampled signals, x1 of n, that's just going to be x1 plugging in n times t sub s, or n times 1 over f sub s, since those two are equivalent. And that gives us x1 of n times 1 over 1,000, since f sub s is 1,000. And that's equal to cosine of 2 pi 400 times 1 over 1,000 n, which in a more simplified form is equal to cosine of 0 0.8 pi n. All right, now let's look at x2 of n we're going to perform the same exact procedure, therefore this is going to be x2 of n times 1 over fs, which is cosine of 2 pi 1400 times 1 over 1000 n, and that's equal to cosine of 2.8 pi n. Okay, however, cosine is 2 pi periodic, 
and since n is an integer, we can always subtract an integer multiple of 2 pi or add to the cosine, and it will be the same thing. Recall that cosine of x is equal to cosine of x plus 2 pi equal to cosine of x plus 4 pi and so on and also in the other direction so x minus 2 pi x minus 4 pi and so on again since n is an integer this part right here can be rewritten as cosine of 0 0.8 pi n plus 2 pi n and the term that is 2 pi n this one cancels out because of this property of the 2 pi periodicity of cosine and therefore this is itself exactly equal to x1 of n and that is where the problem arises as we just saw in the illustration before a vastly different cosine in continuous time goes to the same exact samples as another one. We can actually extend this even further and say that x of n, if it's equal to cosine of 0 0.8 pi n, that's also equal to cosine of 2.8 pi n which is also equal to cosine of 4.8 pi n and so on. Again, an infinite number of sinusoids pass through the same exact samples. Using another property of cosines, that is the even symmetry, where we know that cosine of x is equal to cosine of negative x, we have that x of n if it's equal to cosine of 0 0.8 pi n, well that's also equal to cosine of negative 0 0.8 pi n, which is then also equal to adding a multiple of 2 pi to 1.2 pi n, and to cosine of 3.2 pi n, and again infinitely onwards. So we have this other set of frequencies which are also going to go to the same exact samples. Another way to look at this is if we define this frequency over here as our radial continuous frequency omega and this one right here as a normalized frequency omega hat, it's been normalized by the sampling frequency, we divide it by the sampling frequency, it's a normalized frequency. Well this normalized frequency, this omega hat, is 2 pi periodic. This was not the case with continuous time frequency because we didn't have an integer n which could then help to cancel out multiples of 2 pi. Now we do and therefore omega hat is 2 pi periodic and samples from one signal cannot be distinguished from samples from another if they happen to be in this kind of a form. In general then, given a set of samples, we want to be able to reconstruct or go back from the samples to a continuous time signal and we have to choose the smoothest as I mentioned before. So we want to reconstruct the smoothest possible version of a signal going through a set of samples. So suppose that we have x of t which is cosine of 2 pi 1060t, so it's a sine wave or cosine at a frequency of 1060 hertz, and we sample at 100 hertz. x of n is going to be cosine of 2 pi 1060 divided by 100 n, so we normalize our frequency, and we get that this is cosine of 21.2 pi n. Now to reconstruct the smoothest we're going to keep on subtracting integer multiples of 2 pi until we get the smallest possible frequency. So we can subtract 2 pi we're going to get 19.2 pi n 
then another multiple of 2 pi, we got 17.2. And we keep on going, we keep on subtracting until we're left with cosine of 1.2 pi n. And one more subtraction, we got cosine of negative 0 0.8 pi n, which is going to be a lower frequency even than the 1.2 pi n. Because of the even symmetry of cosine, this is the same thing as cosine of 0 0.8 pi n. This is the lowest possible frequency that we can reach subtracting or adding integer multiples of 2 pi. So this is the lowest frequency or the smoothest possible sinusoid that goes through these same exact samples. And in order to bring it back to the continuous time domain, we can call this x sub r of t, well we're simply going to reverse the process of normalization and denormalize as it were. So that will be just plugging in t times f sub s into our sample equation here instead of plugging in n times 1 over fs. So this just reverses that operation. And that's going to give us cosine of 0 0.8 pi f sub s is 100 t which gives us cosine of 2 pi 40 t. In other words, we get a cosine at a frequency of 40 hertz as opposed to the original one we started with at 1060. What this is saying is that the samples of a 40 hertz cosine look exactly the same as the samples of 1060 hertz cosine if we sample at a fixed rate of 100 hertz. So this completely depends on the sampling frequency. As a final example, we're going to look at a signal that is a summation of two cosines. One of them is at a frequency of 2 hertz, and the second is at a frequency of 5 hertz. The sampling rate is set to be 6 hertz. The sampled signal, using our regular methods of just normalizing the frequency and plugging in n times 1 over fs, well that's just going to be cosine of 2 pi 2 sixth n plus cosine of 2 pi 5 sixth n. And then writing this in terms of the normalized radial frequency as we did before, this is going to be 2 thirds pi n plus cosine of 5 thirds pi n. Now if we add integer multiples of 2 pi or subtract them from this part over here, we're not going to get any lower frequencies than the one that we already have. So therefore, this is going to remain as cosine of 2 thirds pi n. However, for this one, if we subtract an integer multiple of 2 pi, we're going to get that this is equal to negative 1 third pi n, which is at a lower frequency than the initial 5 thirds. And again, using the even symmetry of cosine, we can rewrite that second term as cosine of 1 third pi n. And once again, reconstructing a continuous time signal, we'll call it x sub r of t again, and that's just going to be plugging in t times f sub s into this equation, into our sample equation here, and that's going to give us cosine of 2 thirds pi 60 for the first one, plus cosine of 1 third pi 60 for the second. And multiplying, multiplying it out into our original form, we get that this is 2 pi 2t plus cosine of 2 pi t. In other words, the first part of the signal is the same as it was in the original. What that means is that our sample rate was fast enough in order to capture all the variations of that part of the signal and therefore we didn't get any bad effects. However, the second one 
started out at 5 Hz, but its samples are the same exact as ones going through a 1 Hz signal, and therefore this looks like it was a 1 Hz signal here, just 2 pi t instead of 2 pi 5 t. So we can see that a part of the signal was affected and a part was not. In general, these bad effects, the fact that one signal may look like another after sampling, it's called aliasing, and this is something that you generally want to avoid. As we saw in the previous video, this has to do with the properties of the actual signal itself. Altogether, in this video, we have examined how sampling can create ambiguity as to the original continuous time signal. We have seen this through illustrations and through mathematics. We have also presented the normalized frequency. Finally, we have seen how sampling can distort a signal without even any processing taking place. In the next video, we will generalize these concepts and present a method to avoid complications due to sampling.